do something new in my life something new in my life something new in my life today do something new in my life something new in my life something new in my life Thirty more seconds. I want you to pray to him. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. As you pray, God is fixing things in the lives of people. As you pray, your file is opening in the spirit realm. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. Oh Lord, we cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. We cannot do without you. La habarata mako soprete, repakata mahade bakoshe. La barata membres kepe lavata magroska palata lebaha. Merusha habrata mbakara sotoho de mosso brate. Me brete korahala te kavandra sambla hatai. Lebra hata brusha krata bande leberato kobasi. Leve ruska porra tamarate mogruska pada Shabala hafate kabura ibataba Merete kaporoski parosia The helper of the helpless The husband to the widows The father of the fatherless Parabashate bara For he lifted the poor from the dust and the needy from the dunghill and set them among the princes of his people. Shaparate Barosa Zeproto Toboroto Kaba. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we ask that you speak to us this morning. We have come with our hearts open. We have come expecting that you would do something new we have come expecting a miracle a touch from you we have come to experience your presence and your power lord glorify your name put your words in my mouth to speak to your people and let their lives never remain the same in jesus name we have prayed Please clap your hands together for Jesus as you take your seat in the presence of God. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. John chapter 11 from verse 29. Hallelujah. I want to speak to us briefly on something that uh, the Lord put on my heart and then we will pray. Amen. John chapter 11 from verse 29. John chapter 11 from verse 29. That was the text I was given. So we are going to walk around that scripture today. And as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, they followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Then when Mary was come 
where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, Where have ye laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said Jesus, Behold, how he loved him. Uh, sorry, then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the, the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. And Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, and he had been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Today, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God in your life. Then they took away the stone, verse 41, from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. When I was reading this scripture this morning, the Lord gave me a prophetic word. And the word he gave me, he gave me two words actually, and I'm going to declare it before I begin to speak to us. Number one is from that scripture, John chapter 11 and in verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone. Now in those days, graves were covered with stones because they were carved in rocks. So they were just like a coffin that has a covering. So they would use a large stone to cover it so that the smell of the corpse would not come out. But when it was time for Lazarus to come out from the grave, to come back from the dead, Jesus had to declare, take away the stone. Prophetic word number one, God said to tell somebody that he is rolling every stone of hindrance out of your life. You sound like you didn't hear what I said. He is rolling every stone of hindrance out of your way. No, word number two, the Lord said to me to tell somebody that today he will open your grave. If it is for you, say a bigger amen. amen. Now, every time, listen. The reason why I'm doing this is because God will not do anything outside of his word. Are you hearing me? God is not a magician. He's a miracle worker. You only know that God is interested to change the life of a man when he sends a word. Apart from that word, there is nothing else that can bring a change. I believe in the anointing oil. I believe in mantles. I believe in all these other things. But let me tell you the truth. What makes those things relevant for God to walk through them in your life is when God has spoken. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And now I said God sent me here to say to somebody that he's opening your grave today. Every grave of sickness, every grave of affliction, every grave of poverty, of lack, of delay, every grave of the retrogression, of stagnation, of attacks that the enemy has kept you in for a long time. God sent me today to tell you that he's opening your grave again today. If you believe it, shout a bigger amen. There is no life in the grave. Nobody in the grave can praise God. There, is no, there are no treasures in the grave. The grave is a forgotten place. As a matter of fact, nobody lives in a graveyard. Except that person is not, is not ordinary. Is that true? Imagine if somebody calls you, maybe a friend that you used to know, and then you met the person suddenly, 
And the person said, please come and pay me a visit. And as you are going on your way, the description led you to a graveyard. Will you enter? Even if the friend is standing there, you will begin to look at that person as somebody who is not normal. I'm telling you that in the realm of the spirit, there are people, physically they look fine. But in the realm of the spirit, their destinies have been trapped in spiritual graves. How you know is that not, there is no advancement in their life. Nothing is moving in their life. For some others, the only thing that is increasing in their life is their age. Yesterday you were 29, today you are 30. Tomorrow you'll be 31. But there is no difference between now that you are 31 and when you were 29. God sent me to you today. Not to everybody, but to you today. And he said to declare over your life that he's opening your grave again. I said he's opening your grave again. In fact, the Lord just spoke to me now. That the, the book, the file of a family here in the heavens has been opened today. And God is bringing that family to a season of remembrance. To a season of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go back to our reading. There is so much I can say from this scripture. So much. But I will just say a few things and then we will stand up to pray. I want to speak briefly on experiencing supernatural breakthroughs experiencing supernatural breakthroughs can we get into the word now experiencing supernatural breakthroughs jesus walked up to the tomb of lazarus he realized that when jesus was on his way to the grave everybody followed none of them had ever seen a dead person come back to life so as soon as Lazarus died, they felt it was all over. They had concluded on his case. That is the reason why it's not good to conclude over people. So long as they are alive and so long as Jesus is still on the throne. They had concluded that at least we have seen Jesus heal the blind. We have seen Jesus heal the cripple. But we have not seen a dead person rise before this time. So when Lazarus died, that was the end of the story. As a matter of fact, when Jesus came, Jesus was actually praying when he was weeping. Because there were three times in that chapter that Jesus prayed. I don't have time to show you. But he didn't pray the way we will usually know. Because Jesus was in a desperate situation and there are desperate kinds of prayers you pray in a desperate situation. But they looked at what Jesus was doing as prayer. They thought he was mourning for Lazarus. And so Jesus approached the tomb and told them to roll away the stone. He said that they should open that grave because God was about to change that, that scenario and call back from the dead the one who was, was once dead. And that's why God sent me here to say to somebody that he is rolling away the stone and he's opening your grave again. In Hosea chapter 13 verse 14, we'll come back to John. In Hosea chapter 13 verse 14, in Hosea chapter 13 and in verse 14, here's what the scripture says. It says, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be your plagues. O grave, I will be your destruction. He said, for pity is hidden from my eyes. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. There are many destinies that are trapped in the grave. There are many people that couldn't achieve what God sent them on earth to achieve because they died early. Thank God I'm in a military environment. Many of us have cosmates that have died in the field of battle. Some not even in the field of battle. They finished from the field of battle and came back and were on their way to their family to take leave, to go for leave. And an accident claimed that person. Some have died through poisoning. Some have died through sicknesses. One way or another. And many people who have died were people who were full of potentials. People who were full of many things that their world would have seen and appreciated God. Some of them are even better than us in talent. Some of them are even supposed to do well much more than us. But they were short-lived because they, were di they died. They were short-lived because they were struck by the power of death. 
And now God is giving a promise in this scripture. He said, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. The grave is a power. The grave is a being. It can speak. It can call people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that there are three things that will never say enough. It says one of them is the fire. It says another one is the grave and death. People die every day. In fact, statistics tells us that we have hundreds of thousands of people that die every single day globally. If you do a research, you will see that. Every day. In fact, according to the latest statistics I read, they said after every three seconds, somebody died in this world. So as you are sitting here right now, before the end of this service, maybe two, three, four, five persons have died. But God has kept you alive regardless of the attack of the enemy. And that is the reason why you must always remain thankful to God. The Bible says, if it were not for the Lord who was on our side, so may Israel say, if it were not for the Lord who was on our side, he said, our enemies would have swallowed us like water. They planned everything. They concluded that you are still standing and alive and even having a mouth to testify is something that the devil does not understand. And I prophesy over you that from now to the end of this year, your mouth will be filled with testimonies. God will give you a reason to always laugh to smile and to dance in the name of Jesus let's continue in Ezekiel chapter 37 in Ezekiel chapter 37 God is still giving promises redeeming us from the power of the grave and from the power of death in verse 11 to 12 and 13 he says then he said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of Israel they indeed say our bones are dry our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off they've even concluded on themselves i'm already 40 years nobody will get married to me can i share a testimony with you i know a lady who is 55 years who is getting married next year i know i'm telling you 55 I won't say more than that because I know that when this video goes online, the person know the person. 55 met her husband this year. And after that long wait, God gave her a man of God. <laughs> Are you ready for the miraculous this morning? He said they had they, they had concluded. See, I want you, no matter what you go through in this life make sure even when you have lost hope make sure your mouth is still declaring hope are you hearing what i'm saying make sure that your confession your declaration is still positive even when people have concluded on your case in the book of jonah chapter one the bible says god sent a fish to swallow jonah in chapter two jonah was in the belly of the fish do you know what it means to be in the belly of a fish all of us here in our stomach we have acids those acids help to digest food quickly so that four hours is the highest time to digest food in your stomach now imagine a big whale a fish that acid will be like swimming pool jonah was there for three days and three nights he was he was left to die there but you know what from chapter 2 of jonah verse 1 he kept talking he kept talking he kept talking because a dead man does not talk the day you stop talking or speaking over your life that's the day your destiny is concluded jonah kept on speaking in verse 9 of that book of that chapter 2 jonah said i will perform my sacrifices and my vows to god i will give thanks to god in verse 10 the bible says god sent a fish and sent the fish and he vomited jonah out jonah kept on declaring in fact for him to have said that he said it by faith he said i will perform my sacrifice it's only a man that is alive that can give sacrifice to god though that means jonah did not conclude on himself he knew that he was in the belly of the fish but he knew that something somehow will happen god can still show mercy again and bring me out god just spoke to me now there's somebody here you are in a situation of death depth depth but god said in seven days he's bringing you out of that depth if you are the one shout a bigger amen never you conclude 
on your life. In fact, somebody once said it is never over until God said it is over. They said our hope is lost. Our hope is cut off. Our bones are dry. What else can be done again? Look at verse 12. He said, Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Verse 13 says, Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up from your graves. God will open the grave of somebody today. Experiencing supernatural breakthroughs. When we talk about breakthrough, the word breakthrough means to create a passage, a way, a way for advancement. It also means that you will have to engage force. The reason why you are breaking something is because it is a resistance to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you need to pass through a place and there's a wall there or there's a gate there that refuses to open, the next thing to do is to find a way to break it, isn't it? Sometimes when they are constructing roads around mountain regions, there are portions where mountains will block the road that is supposed to be made there. And then they can bring caterpillars or even bring explosives, mount them there and level that mountain so that a road can be broken through. The Bible calls God a way maker. In Isaiah 43 in verse 19, it says, I will make a way in the wilderness and a path in the waters. The same God that made a way in the, in the Red Sea for his children to pass. The same God, he said in his word in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6, he says, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, thou shalt be made as flat as a plain. Verse 7, I believe. That a mountain can be leveled for you to walk through and enter into your place in destiny. You need breakthrough. Somebody shall breakthrough. How can you experience supernatural breakthrough? I'll give you four keys and then we'll pray. Number one, faith. Number one, faith. You want to experience supernatural breakthrough. Now, when we say supernatural breakthrough, it means that naturally there's nothing that can be done to create a way for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Imagine when you submit CV somewhere and they deny you. You go back again, they deny you. You go back the third time, they shout on you. Say, if, you, if we ever see you here again. How many of you have been there before? They say, if we see you here again, leave this place. In fact, security. Make sure. At that point, there's nothing natural you can do again. Because as far as that person is concerned, he doesn't want to hear anything that has to do with you. So even talking to somebody to talk to that person is a waste of time. That is when you need the supernatural to work for you. The reason why we are Christians and we are children of God is because when the natural fails, we should know how to employ the supernatural. Every child of God that calls on the name of Jesus is not a natural being. You are supernatural. Because the spirit of God is dwelling inside of you. The life of God is living inside of you. People may see you as a human being and it is true. Your body is human. But the spirit inside of you is supernatural. That means that there is something inside of you that has a way of surmounting natural limitations. There is something inside of you that has a way of clearing obstacles, natural obstacles that the enemy places around your path. I see a lot of believers in church who are afraid of the devil when the devil should be afraid of them. And the only reason why people are afraid of the devil is because they seem to know much about the devil, but they know little about themselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For instance, the Bible says, He that is from above is above all, naturally. John chapter 3. Where are you from? Above. That means that you are above all, naturally. Another scripture says, In all these things we are more than conquerors. It didn't say outside of these things. In all these things, God has a very wonderful way He works. 
He will allow the situation and the circumstances to come around you. He will allow the devil to shake you. And even the devil will think he's already winning the battle. But after everything, God has a way of bringing you out of that situation. And just like the, 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 the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they threw them into the fire, but they came out untouchable, unhurt. That is what God has made you to be as a believer. So you need faith. The first key to experience supernatural breakthrough, to employ the power of God to break through every resistance in your life, you need faith. Many people claim to believe God, but truly they don't believe. I will know if you believe God based on the actions you will take after saying that you believe God. If you claim to believe God and you are calling an uncle, you don't believe God. You already have other options. And God will wait until all your options have failed. Then he will step in. But if you can make God your first and only option, you don't need another option. How are you going to get this thing done? How are you going to get a job this year? How are you going to get married? You are a lady and you are already 39 years. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. It takes faith to believe God. 55 years. Are we together here? You need faith. You need faith. You want to see supernatural breakthroughs in your life? You need faith. Remember what happened in that John chapter 11 where we read? In verse 40. This is what Jesus said. He said, Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you will see the glory of God? It starts from believing. The Bible says that without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. You must believe that God exists. You must believe that God is almighty. You must believe that God is able to change things. He is the unchangeable changer. He doesn't change, but he can change things. You must believe that aside from God, no one or nothing else can solve this issue. You must have childlike faith to believe God. You don't claim to believe God and still be checking whether it is done. You remember when Peter was imprisoned by Herod, the church was praying for Peter. They were praying, but I didn't think that they believed that God would release Peter. Because Peter was going to be killed the next day. But that night, an angel of God released Peter and brought him to the house of Mark. The Bible says when Peter knocked on the door, a lady came and saw that it was Peter. She went back and told them it is Peter. They say, now lie. They say it is Peter's angel. So they could believe that an angel can visit them. But they cannot believe that God can bring Peter out of the prison. If you truly believe God over a situation, the next thing you do is you begin to celebrate. You begin to dance. Somebody sent me a text one time. Say, Apostle, I'm going for an interview. We are 10 of us and they say we need one. I say, pray for the others to get jobs elsewhere because you have gotten it. Did you hear what I said? And that's how it is. You have to believe God. Sometimes you can pray on an issue and even after praying, it doesn't look like there is a change. Believe that it has already happened. Change starts from the supernatural. Change starts from the realm of the spirit. If it has not happened in the realm of the spirit, it cannot manifest physically. And it is faith that will give you eyes to see into the spirit to know that it is concluded. It is faith with which you can believe God to know that God can turn your financial situation in 24 hours. God can break every natural law and favor you and in 24 hours you are a multi-millionaire. It can happen. I've seen it happen for people. I've seen it happen in my own life. I went to sleep one day. I had 88 Naira in my account. 88 Naira. And I thanked God and went to sleep. And that was in January by the way. So you know how serious it is. January 18th. Middle January. If nothing happens, God will have to move. Otherwise, you are in trouble. Middle January. I went to sleep with 88 Naira. I had a dream and when I woke up, I saw 2 point something million in my account. Now, 
this is where I got afraid. I didn't just share that testimony to make you clap. The only alert I saw for that money was a one million naira alert. Where the other one point something million came from, I don't know till today. It's not in my bank statement. January of last year. Are you ready for the supernatural today? I, I can share so many stories. So many. I have come to, I so believe God now. I so believe God now that if it doesn't happen at the time God said it should happen, I'll be surprised. Some people came to my house. He's aware of that. This Monday, two ladies came to my house. Their parents are having marital situation. After all their talk, I was so tired, so I wanted them to go. So we stood up to pray. I said, Father, intervene in this family and touch the heart of the Father in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Is that the kind of prayer you pray for a family that is having marital crisis for many years? The next thing you would have said is go on a fast. Isn't it? As at that time, the mother and the father have been living apart for years. That same day, less than four hours later, the father called the daughters and said, call your mother and tell her, please come back to the house. That same day, in four hours. I would rather believe God than believe an idol. I would rather believe God than believe your village uh, oracles. I would rather believe God. I know there are Margi people here, isn't it? And you know, naturally, a Margi man believes in the supernatural from the devil's side more than God. Naturally. So for you to prove to a Margi man that God is alive, he needs to see the power of God. I would rather believe God than believe the shrines in Marama. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, once has he spoken, twice have I heard that power belongs to God. Today, God will do something in your life that will forever make you believe him. Shout a bigger amen. Let's hurry up. I have a few, few more minutes. Number two, prevailing prayers. Keys to supernatural breakthrough. You have a hindrance before you. You have an obstacle before you in your career in your finances, in your spiritual life and you want to break through to enter a place of rest number two, prevailing prayers that is what the Bible calls fervent prayers, James chapter 5 verse 16, it says the effectual and fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much, I'm talking about prayers that you persevere you know the problem with many believers is we have not pressed long enough in prayers that's why we don't have records of testimonies of things that God has done. There are some issues that you will need to pray extensively over. There are some issues that you will need to stay in prayers until there is a change. You don't give up just because you prayed for three days and nothing happened. Apostle, I've prayed, I've fasted. All through this year over this issue, nothing has happened. What do I do? Pray again. Tell your neighbor, pray again. I'm telling you, I know a man who prayed for 27 years for his friend to give his life to Christ. 27 years, a bishop. 27 years, he kept praying for that friend. They were together in the village before the hand of God came on bishop and took him from village to Abuja, from Abuja out of Nigeria. And every time he comes to the village, he will see this guy still into drunkenness and all kinds of things. They had now become old. But he kept praying for him. 27 years later, they called him one day and said, your friend has given his life to Christ. He's now in the evangelism team. He's going about preaching in the morning with megaphone. 27 years. Don't give up. Christians that give up will never see victory. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Jesus said, this kind goeth not except by prayer and fasting. There are times when you have to take three weeks, take three days. There are times when you, you have to stretch. There are issues in my life I have had to wait in prayers. You pray till you are tired and God strengthens you and you continue praying. And the reason why you pray like that is because you know God will answer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 that he taught them a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
in verse 6 of that of, of, of that scripture it says shall not god the righteous judge avenge the elect that cry before him day and night the psalmist says hear my cry O lord psalm 61 from verse 1 and 2 hear my cry O lord attend to my prayer from the ends of the earth will i cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed they say lead me to the rock that is higher than i in psalms 18 verse 3 say i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved if it cannot be done in prayers then it cannot be done any other way prayers pray for that your stubborn child that is already growing up to be wayward and you were not wayward when you were young your your parents were not wayward when they were young you did your best to bring up that child in the fear of the lord but now the devil is after the mind of that child as a mother can you stay in the place of prayer and forge the destiny of your children no matter how far that person goes god with your prayers god knows the day he will encounter that person and turn them back to god you have been trusting god for promotion you have stayed for years can you continue in prayers let me tell you something there is no waste of prayers though even the one you prayed that god seemed not to have answered was not wasted in heaven there is a place where your prayers are stored do you know for every that's why when i say pray i want you to pray with everything inside of you in heaven god stores your prayers in the book of revelation that's what he said it's in chapter 5 he said the the elders had the, in their hands golden bowls that was full of the prayers of the saints your prayer is like incense to god so when you pray and satan tells you you are wasting your time you are not wasting your time god is storing it somewhere a day will come when that prayer has generated enough energy to break through and give you your testimony if only you can continue praying if only you can continue staying in prayers can i tell you something about the devil that you need to know do you want to hear the devil is afraid too the devil too fears the devil is afraid of persevering christians christians that don't give up the devil is afraid of them and i know i'm one of them <laughs> because i know they know i don't they give up oh. no no i've been praying on an issue i've been on all night since 15th of august every night since 15th of august till last night on one issue and i'm doing that because i have seen god giving me victories continually consistently muslims pray five times in a day jews pray three times in a day when they say no god should be worshipped except the king daniel went and prayed how many times three times even at the risk of being thrown to the lions then how many times does a christian pray in a whole day even in a whole week how many times god will empower somebody with the grace for prayer can we go on number three the power of thanksgiving you want to experience supernatural breakthrough the power of thanksgiving philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving you need to thank god from where you are to get to where you ought to be when you are finished praying and done everything you need to do you need to thank him in advance thanksgiving is one of the first expressions of faith that god will do what you have said thanksgiving that's what jesus did when he got to the grave of lazarus he said father i thank you that you have heard me lazarus was still dead he was still at the grave he said father i thank you i heard a man of god said many years ago a family they had no food to eat one night all they had was water they said father thank you for water they drank it and went to sleep by the next day they saw two bags of rice on their door many people grumble and complain in church but they don't know how to thank god even during thanksgiving okay our harvest i'm sure that's also thanksgiving isn't it uh -huh. the way you prepare to thank god during harvest and thanksgiving 
will show if you have the art of gratitude. God has not given you a job, but at least you have graduated. Thank him for that. God has not given you a house, but at least you are alive. Thank him for that. God has not given you a husband, but at least you are working now. Thank him for that. Imagine you give somebody sliced bread who is hungry. And you give the person sliced bread. And the person says, hey, there's no butter in this bread or I need butter. Then you give the person butter. The person says, now I need tea to add to it. Then you give the person tea and the person says, the sugar is too, is too small. I need sugar. What will you do? I'm, I know what our military brothers will do. That person needs to be worked on. Abby, you need to work on that person. Now that's how many of us are to God. If you look at your life, you will see that there are many things that you are yet to thank God for. And now you are expecting him to do more. You are trusting God for a jeep. Thank him for the small car you have first. There are people who don't have tire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are trusting God for, to, 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 for God to use you in ministry. Thank God that you are working in the church. You are an usher in the church at least. It starts from there thanksgiving when jesus wanted to multiply bread he gave thanks and the bread multiplied god will give you a testimony today and then finally number four the prophetic you want to experience supernatural breakthrough you need the prophetic in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 13 the bible says by a prophet he brought them out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved by a prophet psalms 107 verse 20 he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction the prophetic is god's tool for change and creation on the earth every time god will do something in the life of a man he will speak first if you have prayed you have fasted you have done thanksgiving you have exercised everything you know to do and nothing is working engage the prophetic now look at that testimony that reverend shared the prophecy came and i finished and i left thank god for what god led him to do otherwise till today you would not have seen the fulfillment in her life and you know my protocol was just telling me funny enough that day i came she was not around they went to call her i believe today again she's not around again may you not be missing in your day of visitation <laughs> engage the prophetic if god is not speaking to you look for somebody that god is talking to so that that god can talk to you through that person let me share a story with you there was a time in my life my finances were tied nothing was coming and i was not used to that God had blessed me and is still blessing me by his grace to a point where it can be up to 48 hours that I will not experience a financial miracle. I say the truth and I lie not before God. Maximum 48 hours I must experience a I mean a miracle, not small, a miracle financially. But this period, one week, nothing. Ten days, nothing. Ah, and man of God has needs so. No, there are people that don't believe that man of God has needs. Man of God should give you money, pray for you, give you food, do everything for you, bless you, join. Lay hand on you. Papa, lay hand on me, lay hand on me. Because man of God has everything. Man of God has needs too. There are things we do in the church that we don't even need to take from the church purse. You have to do it yourself. That's why when I see people insulting men, I just laugh. Insulting men of God, I just laugh at them. And don't join them oh let me tell you don't join don't put your mouth when they are insulting a pastor or gossiping don't put your mouth many people who are experiencing stagnation if you check they they gossip their pastor can i be raw today sir yes they they gossip their pastor check their life they are not moving don't join them we are not saying that the men of god are perfect no but leave them for god don't open your mouth and speak against one that God has anointed. Then tomorrow you now go and you want him to lay hand on you. That's that's pretense. It doesn't work. That's just just you are playing games with God. Yesterday you spoke about him with somebody. 
now today you are coming you are planning to go after the service now to the office to lay hand on you that's why your life is in a cycle but today that cycle will be broken I did everything I prayed I fasted sir nothing happened there was no money coming anywhere I even sowed seed the more I sow the more I was not seeing anything you know what I did I went to look for a prophet oh. in your case this is your prophet these are your prophets me I have my own prophet that God has sent to me I went to look for him if God no go hear me God must hear his man of God when I consulted the man of God the man of God said well this is an attack and he told me what God showed him in fact in one night I told him this evening by the following morning when we we're talking say hey this is what God opened my eyes and I'd been praying for days and God did not show me me the almighty apostle in quote he said, okay, this is how you pray. Pray like this, pray like this, pray like this. I started that prayers, or those prayers. He told me that from the fifth day, I will experience breakthrough. On the third day, I experienced a breakthrough. The first, the first financial breakthrough came in dollars. You see, when God gives you breakthrough, eh, the way the, the testimonies and the miracles will flow, it, you will know that somebody has been holding it somewhere. And God sent me here over somebody. Anywhere your blessings have been trapped. Anything that God has designed for you that is held up by a devil, by a witch somewhere. I declare a release today. I say I declare a release today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That was why Reverend had to tell her. I don't know if it was Reverend who told her to sow his seed. I don't know. But that was very wise. The lady that they testified. Okay. Okay, that she should sow a seed. Oh, good. When you talk that one, they'll say, hey, don't call me. One chop money. Does God need your money? God does not need anything from you. He said, if I'm hungry, I will not tell you. The cattle on a thousand hills. Not a thousand cattle on a hill. The cattle on a thousand. So if you have 200,000 cattle on one hill. God does not need anything from you. It's us that need God. When they say so, you see, they'll say, hey, pastor, one chop our money. Why is it every time you mention giving in church, something is biting people? I may give out. In fact, once you mention giving, you have made it easy for me. I, I prefer to give than to fast. And at the fast. But I prefer to give than to fast. And let me tell you, let me be honest with you. In engaging the prophetic, there are things you don't need to pray for. Elijah went to the widow. He said, make for me first. For thus said the Lord, the barrel of me will not fail. Neither the cruise of oil run dry till the day God sends rain. And when she did that, it happened as the prophet said. There are some kinds of problems, some obstacles that you will need a seed to break through. You are rising to become a senior officer. No, that's when you need to employ sacrifices. That's when you need to know how to engage the heavens. There are some things you do in the natural that will shake open your heaven. When the breakthrough started, I took a seed in five zeros and sold it to the life of that prophet. I was as if I just went and opened the thing the more. Every corner, it started flowing. And today, God has sent me to provoke that financial grace on somebody. Amen. Don't worry, I won't ask you to sow a seed. Uh, but I have to tell you, that's one of the ways. You are experiencing delay. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything. Nothing is happening. You are even a worker in the church. Know how to engage the prophetic. It's not just about the seed. It's about the word that God speaks. Stand on your feet. We are about to pray now. I want you to open your mouth and thank the Lord for the word you have heard. Thank the Lord for the word that you have heard. Give Him praise. Give Him praise. In Jesus' name we pray. One prayer and we are done tonight. There's something that God just laid in my heart to do. If you are here 
and your family member is here please go and hold their hands we are going to pray some prayers now if your family member is with you go and hold their hands don't come to the altar if they are in the pool please you can go there all right if your family member please take very serious what we're about to do because there's there's about to be major breakthroughs over the life of people so i hope i hope i hope i hope i'm permitted i'm sorry please if your family if you don't have a family member hold a friend or a brother let's agree together we are going to pray Sharabata beratu husoto ya mele parata barata ke apasuja eka parada la de balavosia are we ready are we ready don't block the camera please <laughs> are we ready now please i want you to take these two minutes of prayer very serious Please try to control the children. No noise, please. Please take what, what is about to happen very serious. We thank God for all the testimonies that we have seen in the past. God is about to do another thing again in your life. You are going to pray without your family member. Everything that has restricted my breakthrough or our breakthrough as a family today in this service under this anointing of the holy ghost let it be removed let it be uprooted families are going to experience breakthroughs today some of you listen you are praying here now but god is sending an angel to your family in another place are you hearing what i'm saying god is sending an angel to your family in another place sir you sir yes sir do you have a sister do you have sisters you have a sister that man you are holding is he your family member no sir no good when i said as you are praying here god is sending angels to your family i saw an angel leaving you traveling from here to another state in nigeria i saw a lady who is somehow light skin in complexion standing and god said he's about to visit your sister amen are you hearing what i'm saying yes sir you have a sister right yes sir clap for jesus do you believe sir yes sir i believe sir don't worry there are things god will do for you amen. are you hearing me yes sir what you make or happen for another person god will make to happen for you amen i think it was the chaplain who was telling me he was preaching recently that he gave a word to a, a lady she came with a request for herself but god gave a word for her sister god is about to turn your morning into dancing god is about to turn your night into day in two minutes i want you to hold the hand of that neighbor and cry to god every hindrance over our family today under this anointing let it be removed lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every hindrance, every obstacle, every impediment, every brick wall, every satanic restraint, everything that has hindered, I can't see you pray. I can't hear you pray. Will you cry to God? Will you cry to God? Every stubborn situation, Shato kapa rekete pete ke pese kete ya shekete balata barata rite ke balata kaparata esa paroto koto boya somebody pray shala barata yeke para madaya ika bara soto ya let that wall be broken let those gates be broken. Let those gates be broken. In Jesus' name we pray. One more prayer. Every stubborn situation that has refused to change, today we enforce that change. 
under this anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. St. Stephen's pray. St. Stephen's pray. Call upon the God of heaven. Call upon the God of heaven. Call upon the God that answers prayer. O thou that hears prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Unto thee shall all flesh come. Parasito Kobalate. Is Lord, is Lord, Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every thought come. That Jesus Christ is the Lord, He 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 has re- Come on, pray. Every stubborn situation be rolled away, be rolled away. Every need must bow, every thought, that Jesus, He is the Lord, He is the Lord, He is the Lord, Hallelujah. He is the Lord. He is the Lord. Every oh, every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. In Jesus' name. Every knee must bow, every thought confess that Jesus Christ. While your hands are held together, please close your eyes. I'm seeing something like a blanket, a black blanket. There is a family here. There are families here where the delay, the situations around are sponsored by witchcraft. And I'm seeing God rolling that blanket away. Just close your eyes. Father, I stretch my hand in the name of Jesus. From the front to the back, from the left to the back, to the right. Any family here that has been restrained by witchcraft activities, that has been restrained by occultic manifestations, by the power of shrines, I command in the name of Jesus, let that power be lifted now. Let that power be broken now. Let that blanket be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, that particular family that you showed me that blanket on, that veil of darkness that has been covered over their destinies. Lord, I ask that your right hand will come upon those individuals. Even right now. And let that veil be destroyed. Now just be quiet. Let that veil be destroyed. Let that veil be destroyed. Let that veil be destroyed. I just wait. In 10 seconds, God will touch somebody now. I see the hand of God very strong coming on a couple of individuals. Father, let it fall upon them. Let that stubborn hold of the enemy on their life be lifted. Be lifted. Be lifted. 
be lifted be lifted be lifted be lifted be lifted This lady, can I pray for you? The one with red color. Yes, can I pray for you? Come. Is that your sister? Huh? That's your sister. Two of you come. Kalabashika panadalama. Lebaruska baranai. Are you married? Are you married? Yes. You are married? Yes. Do you have children? I want to pray for them. Please stretch your hands towards them. Wait. There's somebody that God wants to set free. I'm, I'm seeing it in my visions. Just lift your hands first. I will we'll come to them. There's a family that God is setting free. And the sign that God is showing me is that the power of God will rest on somebody. What I'm saying, you will hear a shout. You will hear a shout. Just lift your hands and close your eyes. Father, let your hand come upon that individual, wherever they are. Find them with your mighty power. Find them with your mighty power. Let every chain of the enemy that has held them bound be broken. Be broken at the count of three. One. Two. Three. Touch. Touch, 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 touch. Bring that person. I want to pray for that person. Now stretch your hands towards these two people. I want to pray for them. I saw something inside of you. That's why I called you. Huh? Why is she here? She's an okay, okay. You are an usher. Do you love God? You love God. God wants to use you. Touch my hand. Father, anoint her afresh. Touch in the name of Jesus. Let the grace of God rest upon you from today. You are an usher, but I see God using you in the place of prayer and intercession. And God is going to use you to break the bonds of darkness break the yokes and the chains this woman is anointed i stir up every gift that is inside of you i'm using that to pray for anyone here that has a passion for prayer and intercession let that grace for intercession and prayer find you wherever you are right now i stir up that gift in your spirit may the lord use you to do mighty things in the name of Jesus. You know why I called the two of you? I'm going, to, I'm going to be very brief so we can be done. I saw something in you. Alright? That's why I had to pray for you. I wanted to call just you. But then the Holy Spirit told me that the two of you are related. That's why I asked, is that your sister? Unlike that other soldier who was holding somebody who is not his brother. You are not married. But I saw the enemy planting. Don't be afraid. All right, God wants to set you free. I saw the enemy plant something in your body. All right, yes, sir. I saw a case of fibroid. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because this is like them telling you you need to be operated so that they can bring it out. And as soon as I saw that, I saw something like a light move from you to her. That's why I needed to confirm if you people were related. Now, you are not married, yes, sir. but you are married. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the attack is supposed to happen simultaneously. So that now that you are married, it will become difficult for you to conceive. Or that you will conceive and then they will tell you there is something else in the womb apart from a child. But God wants to set the two of you free. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. How long have you been married? One year, eight months. One year, eight months. Have you had any conception? No. No. Don't be embarrassed. Because God is going to give you your child now. Yeah. Do you believe? I believe. Or I go to somebody else? I believe. Are you sure? Yes. Do you experience abdominal pains yes, sometimes? Sir. Yes, sir. And the pain I'm talking about, lower abdomen, then towards the center, 
and then sometimes like pains around the sides yes, sir. you experience that yes, sir. stretch your hands towards this lady two of you lift your hands father in the name of Jesus let that yoke of affliction of shame and reproach that the enemy has carefully planted in their lives in their bodies as a church of God we uproot it now we uproot it now in the name of Jesus Christ everything that God has not planted in your womb we command it to be dissolved now we command it to be uprooted now in the name of Jesus Christ when do you want to get married next year is there somebody not really okay father when next year April May choose one April May May by his grace you want it to be May yes sir why do you like May what's wrong with May you just want May yes sir you are tired of waiting alright father we declare in the name of Jesus by May let her be maritally settled Look at me. Before the end of this year and into January, I saw a man walk into your life. Amen. Congratulations. It is done. Amen. Meanwhile, God is also going to bless you financially. Amen. What do you do? I used to work with a company. I just came to town last week. You just came to town? Yes. Oh, you don't stay here? Yes. Uh, this is why you came home. This is why. You better believe it. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Father, we release it upon her. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's your company where you are working. I see a recommendation that will bring promotion for you. Amen. And at the same time, I'm seeing another offer opening up for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, according to the time of life, give her her children. Amen. And we declare that nothing that God has not planted will grow in this womb. Amen. In Jesus' name. This was a lady. Father, we break the chains of darkness. Stretch your hands towards her. I'm looking at her and I'm seeing sometimes that like there's a weight. She moves around feeling like there's something on her. Like a weight suppressing her. Especially when she prays or something like that. That's, that's what I saw in the realm of the spirit. Stretch your hands towards her. But Father, today we declare it broken in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare it broken. And I speak to anyone here whose family is being plagued by the powers of a shrine, by the powers of a coven. We set fire on that coven now. We set fire on that shrine now. We declare the judgment of God now in the name of Jesus. Sir, your time has come. Come. Come, sir. Wait, where's your family? My family? Uh, yes, yeah. Where are they? This one? Yes, sir. This your wife? No, not married. Your sister? You're not married? Yeah. Okay, these are your siblings? Yes. You're not married? Yes. Why? You should have been married by now. Don't worry, sir. You are five years behind schedule. That's what I'm saying. Do you believe what God is doing today? No, you are here. Oh, you will see how God will turn their life. That fair woman with dark scarf. Yes, you are looking at another place. Come. I want to talk to you about your husband. Yes, come, please. I'm seeing you five years, sir, behind schedule. All right? But God is going to break that delay. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. See, the enemy has been attacking. It looks like any time you want to make a major decision or something major is about to happen, there are different ways the enemy will attack you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Most of the time he uses people. But there's another way he does. This one now is you. It's you. It's your fault. I'm sorry to say this, but it's your fault. This one. This one I'm about to say. Naturally, he will use people. They will not agree. 
you will talk the person, the person will agree before. When it's time to do, the person will just back out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, Pastor. But you too, when it now looks like this thing is sure, the enemy will strike you with fear. You become afraid. True, and that fear has delayed you taking certain decisions that will have fast track you to where God wants you to be. Yes, sir. Is that true? It's true, sir. God is bringing that to an end now. Yeah. You are five years behind schedule. Yes, so let's, 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 let's pay back all the areas by prophecy. Yes, Father, stretch your hands towards him. Let's do it together. We command a marital door of settlement to open yeah. for him. Yeah. Breathe upon me, Spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands and surrender to your will, oh Lord. I'm yielding to your spirit. God is preaching on people now. I'm working in your love. Jesus, I adore. God is preaching upon people right now. Jesus, I Receive the touch of the Spirit of God. I adore the Holy Father, we declare that the door of marital settlement opens for your son. And let that grace for a multi-millionaire that you have placed in him even before he was born. We unlock that grace now. Amen. We unlock that grace now. Amen. Everything that has tied your productivity, we lose it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God raised you as a Joseph in this family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God raised you as a Joseph. You know, Joseph was not the firstborn. But it was the consolation of the family. This family, you are the consolation of this family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And from today, we shift you from where the enemy has kept you to your place in destiny. God said within the next 10 months, things are going to happen so fast. Your testimony is done. In Jesus' name. What do you do? Because I want to prophesy contracts. What do you do? I work with um, International Committee of the Red Cross. You work in ICRC? Yes. Good. I saw an open door for a contract. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. I saw you signing a contract. Amen. And I want you, you people are members of his family. If what I'm saying is correct, within the next, I said 10 months, huh? I saw something happening and a recommendation for him to travel out of Nigeria. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today your time has come. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And God, God has prepared a lady for you. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God has prepared a lady for you. You are going to meet her between now and December. Yeah. That's what I saw. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Clap your hands for Jesus. You are pregnant. Is this your first child? How many more minutes do I have left? And eh, church, how many more minutes do I have? One minute. Eh? As the spirit leads. <laughs> no, it's not. It can't be as the spirit leads. You. Because it's grace that is on me now. We can prophesy to everybody here. But I have a service later. I'm preaching somewhere later. Stretch your hands towards this woman. Where's your husband? He's at his working place. He's at his working place. What does he do? He's a soldier. He's a soldier. Is this your first child? Mm -hmm. Have you had a miscarriage before? Have you had a miscarriage? Do you know what miscarriage is? Like, so, supposed to be pregnancy, but then blood flowed out. Have you had a miscarriage before? You are sure? You are sure never? All right. Stretch your hands towards her. Father, 
we declare that this baby is preserved in the name of Jesus Christ we cancel complications at the time of delivery you hear what I said at the time when you are getting close to delivery we cancel complications now your husband let me ask you a question does he love God Eh? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Are you sure? Your husband loves God. All right. I'm going to pray for him. God is going to favor him. Eh? But I see God delivering him from a temptation. Should I continue? Or let me stop here. She said continue, but she's quiet. <laughs> God is going to help him. There's favor coming for him. Are you hearing me? But I want to agree with you that we'll pray. There is a trap of temptation that the enemy has set ahead of him. Two, actually. And one of those traps will make you and him separate. But we say no to it today. That's why I ask if he loves God. Are you hearing me? Now, you see, when people fall into temptation, it's not because they are bad. The Bible says, pray lest you fall. Are you hearing me? You have to watch and pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is about to favor him. Doors are about to open for him. But let it not be that the blessing will now become a problem later. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Give me your right hand. Father, we cancel every trap that the enemy has set ahead of him. And we pray that you will preserve the life of her husband. Because when I held your hand, I saw an attempt on his life between now and the end of this year. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, this is, don't be afraid. God reveals to redeem. Eh? If it's good prophecy, I will say it. If it's bad one, I will say it and will cancel it. Okay? There are things I don't want to say because of public. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But I saw an attempt on his life by the enemy between now and December. But we cancel it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Look at me, man. He is preserved by the blood of Jesus. But there will be a sign. There will be a near experience. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see if it will happen. So that you will believe that what God said was true. But his life is preserved. Because the plan of the enemy is to ensure that by the time this child is out, if your husband will not fall, let you be a widow. But we say God forbid to that. In the name of Jesus. We declare that you are preserved in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for anyone whose destiny has been under lock and key. Anyone that the enemy has tied in their finances, in their career, in their marital lives, in their relationships. We declare in the name of Jesus that between now and the next 30 days, let there be a release. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that is due for a promotion, receive it today. Receive it today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Can I speak to you? Walk towards me. Stop. God is giving you divine acceleration. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. You have wasted time at a place. But God is about to increase your speed. Amen. God is moving you forward. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Are you married? No, sir. Well, let me not assume whether every single lady wants to get married. Do you want to get married? Yes, sir. Okay. Because some people want to remain the mother of Jesus. They want to be pregnant. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, I join my faith with your pastor any single person here that needs to settle down maritally between now and the next one year we settle you in the name of Jesus number one God is going to give you speed I see marital settlement but number two I see God putting resources in your hand she looked like this she doesn't understand what I'm saying I see God putting resources in your hand amen are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And this will be like a reward. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Can I ask you a question? Are you a giver? Yes, sir. You give? Yes, sir. Not just giving to church. I see like you also help people. Yes, all sir. Of that. That's why God said he's about to reward you. Amen. He's rewarding both your giving and your labor. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. He's rewarding both your giving and your labor. What is wrong with him? Okay, he just fell. Oh, he's weak. Is he sick? Okay. The Lord strengthen you. In the name of Jesus. Mommy, let me pray for you. Father, increase her days. We speak against affliction in this body. Amen. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that the Lord strengthens this body. Amen. We speak strength to this body. Amen. There are things that she feels, but she doesn't really tell people, so she doesn't make them scared. But we speak strength to this body. Amen. The Bible says, with long life will I satisfy you. Amen. We declare long life over you. Amen. Live in the name of Jesus. And God also says he's stabilizing our blood pressure. Amen. That's what I saw in the name of Jesus. I saw something like a meter in the spirit. God is stabilizing our blood pressure in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards this lady. Father, come. Reward her for the years of faithfulness and of labor. The season of disappointment is over. Amen. Your season and your time for a visitation has come. Amen. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Where are your family? Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> was it true those things I said? They were very true. In fact, last week I was afraid of death. As if I would die. She was but afraid of death. No, she will leave. She will leave. You still have at least 15 more years Hallelujah. on earth. You still have 15 more years. Hallelujah. Sometimes I see she struggles with sleep. And sometimes there are things she's going through in her body she doesn't say out. Yes. Some. She doesn't yes. want to say it like it is. Yes. So that you people will not be afraid. Yes. God is showing me that this woman is a woman of faith. Yes. That's what I'm saying. This woman is a woman of faith. So you see how sometimes say, I'm strong. Yes. always forceful you have had to fight with many things yes. but in your old age god is giving you rest Amen. where are Amen. your children daddy your children where are they all of them apart from the young man who is living living all of them line up all daddy's children line up i prophesy to all of you all of you line up just this tree just this tree just this tree. Can I pray for you? Huh? Okay, these are your... Oh, they are not your biological children. Okay. This is... Look at me, sir. Do you love God? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. You want to serve God? Yes, sir. God is showing me that this guy will be a preacher. That's what I'm saying. Amen. You are shocked? Yes, sir. <laughs> you are surprised, but? Yes, sir. Me, I was not a preacher. I was a musician before now. I'm seeing the hand of God on his life. Yeah. Are both his parents alive? They are both alive. I'm seeing the hand of God on your life. I'm seeing the hand of God on his life to preach. There's something that I would not say. And I'm sorry it, I won't say it, but it will happen. But when it happens, God will give strength to the family. God will strengthen the family. That's all I will say. I won't say it. Alright? Something will happen in the family. It will affect him. But God will strengthen him. Look at me, sir. The hand of God is on your life to preach. God wants to use you to do signs and wonders. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. God is going to take away from you friends that are not relevant to your destiny. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
and God is going to encounter you and cause you to love him in a very unique way. Now you begin to spend time on your Bible and in prayers. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Hold my hand. Father, we break the powers of his foundation. We break every paternal or maternal influence that is demonic. We release him right now. We release his mind. We declare that he will serve you. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is your daughter, sir. Are you a singer? Yes, sir. You sing? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you in the university? Yes, sir. What are you studying? Biochemistry. Biochemistry. You're studying biochemistry, but I'm not seeing you using that course. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. I'm not seeing you using the course. Was that because you wanted to? Eh? Yes, sir. I'm not seeing you using that certificate. You will not believe. I'm seeing her on television station. I'm seeing her on social media. Like she became a very popular person, and they are interviewing her. That's what I'm seeing her. That's why I had to ask what she's studying. The hand of God is going to come on your life in a very dramatic way. Now, don't worry, after school, eh, there's going to be a little delay. All right? God is using it to equip you. Don't be, don't be, don't feel bad. Don't be afraid. It may look like no job. It may look like you are stuck in one place. That little delay, God is using it to prepare you for something greater. I don't know what God wants to do with you, but it's going to make you popular. I'm seeing you on TV. I'm seeing them interviewing you on TV. This is your daughter. This one. Who is the last daughter? Huh? Daughter. Daughter. Last daughter. Oh, 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 she's the first and last daughter. This one. The hand of God is on her life. Father, we release that grace now. And I declare that you will love the Lord in this stage of your life. Amen. May the fire of God rest upon you in a dramatic way. You will love God and serve Him. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh -huh. I've seen it again. In addition to what God will do with her, she will also preach. That's what I'm saying. Amen. She's a singer. Eh? But she will also preach. That's what I'm saying. But there are other things you will do that will make you popular. But I see you going for conferences. I see them inviting you. And I see a fire and a grace on your life. God will use you to bring revival. You will travel around Africa. You. Are you ready? Are you hearing me? But God, there's something that has to do with business that you will enter into. Because I'm looking at you and I'm seeing fashion on one side. And seeing cosmetics on the other side. All right. Is that true? What do you have to do with that? I'm so close. She's so close. <laughs> Can you clap for Jesus? Ah, time is gone. As God is blessing his children, your children will grow up to serve the Lord. Your children will fear the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we release this grace. You see, in the kingdom of God, when God delays you, he's setting you for speed. Are you hearing you? Yes, sir. When he delays you, it took me four years before I secured admission to school. And even after I secured admission and finished and came out, it took me some years before I started ministry. But when God is ready to announce you, you will not walk, you will not run, you will fly. They Amen. that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall what? Mount up with wings. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, There's going to be a little delay when you finish school. But during that period, God will give you encounters. He will give you visions, things about your life. And I see that before you are 40 years, the world would have heard your voice. Amen. We release this destiny today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you clap your hands and bless the Lord? We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Because of time, let's close here today. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. 
Church, can we sing together? For you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh. Say you are wonderful. You are. Sing it one more time. You are wonderful. You are. 